start our I can see you are very excited about the debate. Please take your seats. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to start our debate on improving EU support for regional research and innovation ecosystems, the example of the regional innovation valleys. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome to this debate and to the plenary session of the Committee of the Regions, Commissioner uh, Ilyana Ivanova, Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education, and Youth, and our friend, Commissioner Elisa Ferreira, Commissioner responsible for cohesion and reforms. So we will start we will start with Commissioner Ivanova. You have the floor for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, uh, dear President Cordero, dear Commissioner Ferreira, dear Elisa, honorable members. Allow me, first of all, to thank you for this opportunity to discuss how we can further improve our support for regional innovation systems across Europe. This debate comes at an important moment with the European elections just behind us and intense discussions ahead of making Europe fit for the future. I firmly believe that innovation will play a key role in these discussions and also in tackling the challenges of today and tomorrow. Because it is clear that if Europe wants to succeed in the global race for competitiveness, we need to strengthen our innovation performance. This is why two years ago we launched the new European Innovation Agenda. We set out a wide range of actions from access to finance to experimentation spaces from innovation ecosystems to talent attraction and also talent development. The push for innovation must include the entire Union, and the regions here play a crucial role in driving this process. This is why, as part of our innovation agenda, we launched a dedicated action to create up to 100 regional innovation valleys. And we took the first step together with this committee two years ago when we launched the Partnerships for Regional Innovation as a pilot involving 74 EU territories, including 63 regions. And we continued working hand in hand. Last year, we launched a joint call to all regions in Europe to express their interest to become regional innovation valleys. And by autumn, we had more than 100 interested regions. In parallel, we also launched two calls for proposals under Horizon Europe and the European Regional Development Fund. Altogether, 170 million euros allocated for the support of the creation of regional innovation valleys. And today I'm truly happy to announce jointly, of course, with Commissioner Ferreira, dear Elisa, that we have exceeded this goal. The Commission has identified 151 regions as regional innovation valleys. And becoming a regional innovation valley is a sign that these regions are committed to enhance their cooperation, also to strengthen their innovation investments. I will not name all regional innovation valleys. Uh, you can see them uh, in the map. However, allow me to give you a snapshot of the selected regions. I was particularly pleased by the balanced representation of regions based on their innovation performance. Around half of the regions represent innovation leaders, and strong innovators, whereas the other half are moderate and emerging innovators. And the links created between these regions can be one of the main benefits of becoming a regional innovation valley. Most of the regions dedicated to and decided uh, to, to focus on mastering the digital transformation or achieving circularity. 
but we also see significant interest amongst the regions in joining forces to improve also health care, reduce reliance on fossil fuels, and also increase global food security. <coughs> and let me give you just one concrete example. In one project, more than 20 regional authorities and innovation players from nine regions, from Spain to Romania, from Sweden to Ukraine, will scale up deep tech healthcare innovations based on advanced medical products and health data across Europe. They will connect innovation ecosystems, transferring practices and solutions from one region to another. And they will be working closely with clusters, universities, research centers, infrastructures, NGOs, and networks involving scientists and also entrepreneurs. Our Horizon Europe program will support this project with more than 11 million euros, mobilizing the same amount of additional funding by members of the consortium, including from the European Regional Development Fund. And we are indeed working very closely with Commissioner Ferreira to create more synergies between funding from our research and innovation program on one hand and from our regional development program on the other hand. And dear Elisa, allow me here to thank you sincerely to you and to your services for this excellent cooperation. And we are also providing guidance to national authorities. How can they best achieve these synergies? It is great to see that member states are making good use of this. For example, there are already more than 30 seal of excellence support schemes at both regional and national level implemented in 18 countries. With all this, we are responding to your calls for better coordination between different EU instruments supporting innovation. Let me thank you once again for this opportunity and also for your continued support for the Regional Innovation Valleys Initiative. Now I'm looking forward to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Estimada Elisa Ferreira, Senhora Comissária, tem a palavra por 10 minutos. Muito obrigada. And I will, for facility reasons, speak in English, although I really appreciate to be able to be introduced in my mother tongue. Uh, caro Vasco, dear President Cordeiro, Commissioner Ivanova, dear Iliana, uh, distinguished members, uh, dear friends of innovation, and a special, special salute to all those that I, I've been, with whom I've been working f during these, these periods, and I see a lot of, of them here. So my thanks for the invitation to discuss uh, with you this important topic. We very much appreciate this committee's active interest in using and developing innovation as a lever for regional development and your continued support to ensure that every region makes the most of its potential. We are talking about rebalancing growth. There is no way you can rebalance and stimulate growth if you don't use innovation in order to increase productivity and competitiveness. And I would also like to very, very sincerely thank Commissioner Ivanov and the services, not to exchange compliments, but in fact I need to recognize the excellent cooperation in linking up innovation and cohesion policies, in, in, uh, notably through this event, this uh, uh, regional innovation valleys. This new initiative, part of the new innovation agenda, is welcome and it is necessary. And this is also something that we, there is a lot of effort put here. As, as you all know, there was a lot of mismatching between regional support and innovation and research support. Now we are trying to make a coherence between the two agendas uh, because we uh, find it a source of value added. 
Innovation, in fact, is the key force behind sustainable economic growth. But high innovative performance and dissemination of research results and their transformation in commercially successful products and services is not happening neither automatically nor everywhere in Europe. The ninth cohesion report, which was adopted in uh, March, uh, confirmed a very strong clustering of innovation around more developed, often metropolitan areas, while a significant proportion of the population lives in the other reg regions, in regions that have less innovative capacities, and so they risk being left behind. The Regional Innovation Valleys Initiative brings together European cohesion policy and European research and innovation policy in order to strengthen regional innovation systems, especially where it is more difficult to make them flourish, which is the less developed regions. We are working together, the two commissioners and our services, in order to foster interregional cooperation on research and innovation across the EU with a focus on the burning challenges of our time. These five European challenges that we have selected are reducing the reliance on fossil fuels. Yeah, I am I'm in kind of referring to everything that uh, my dear friend has already mentioned, but reducing the reliance on fossil fuels, increasing global food security, mastering the digital transformation, including cybersecurity, improving health care, and improving the circular economy. Importantly, the initiative addresses all these issues with a regional reference uh, at a regional level based on the smart specialization strategies. The initiative builds on the specific strengths and potential of each region. Another key feature is the connection of less developed regions with more developed regions. This allows them to build European value chains, which are increasingly important in today's economy. And here we build on the work of the Interregional Innovation Investment Instruments, one of the mechanisms supporting the regional innovation values. Launched, as it was referred uh, a couple of years ago, this instrument is creating new links, partnerships and knowledge sharing across Europe through the support of the European Regional Development Fund. This benefits all regions, but especially those who are still lagging behind. One of the key lessons learned is the importance of bringing together local strengths, including small and medium companies, and local innovation actors to build, in fact, this European value chain. And it is in this spirit that the Interregional Innovation Investment Instrument has already committed 70 million euros to the regional innovation values, more than half of the financing so far. And today I am delighted to announce together with Commissioner Ivanova the list of regions designated as regional innovation valleys. I, want, yeah, I, I think there will be a map projected there, but in fact you'll be able to see in the map uh, these uh, 151 regional innovation valleys, and you can confirm that uh, they are spread across Europe. They will be published, if not immediately, later on. They currently show different levels of development and of innovation performance. In common, they shared commitment to enhanced coordination and the directionality of their research and innovation policies engage in interregional collaboration and strengthen their regional innovation ecosystems. Congratulations, above all, to the regions that have taken up this challenge. I encourage you to use this opportunity to strengthen your research and innovation ecosystems. And among you, there are those that are leading and that are those, those that still have a lot of work to do. But helping each other, 
I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to grow together. And in fact, uh, also to reinforce something that I'm always um, focusing on, uh, improving your administrative capacity and funding to take innovation in your regions to the next level. Regional innovation values are a milestone in the collaboration between cohesion policy and Horizon Europe, and I firmly believe that further collaboration and synergies are possible. Both policies can achieve more by working together. Here, we should not only think of cumulative funding or transfers. In fact, the most fruitful synergies are likely to be upstream and downstream synergies. In other words, both policies should align by design, making sure that each one takes account of the goals of the other in planning and in formulation. I think this approach has an enormous potential for our common goal of an innovative, competitive and, above all, cohesive Europe, one which holds its own in the modern economy by mobilizing every region with no place left out. So I look forward to our discussion and thank you very, very much for your engagement. Thank you. Muito obrigado, Elisa, pela intervenção e pela partilha. Now we will proceed with debate with members. I would like to give the floor now to Tania Ristova for two minutes. Thank you, President. Dear Commissioner Ivanova, dear Commissioner Ferreira, as said the Commission Chair and as representative of the EPP Group, I'm extremely happy to have both of you here during our Committee of the Regions plenary. And today is this debate which focuses on the strengthening of the regional innovation ecosystem across Europe is something extremely important, very timely and also politically opportune. And at the beginning of the new mandate, we should provide both strategic vision and also clear answers about how to build our capacity and to connect our innovation ecosystems. We are now, we will agree on a turning point for the life cycle of the European Commission. And I'm also convinced that the regional innovation values, together with other synergetic projects like the EU missions and also the seal of excellence, is the only way forward. The calls for regional innovation values would be multiplied to include more societal challenges during the next programming period. The future Commission should also propose additional mechanisms in order to better communicate with us local authorities, but also with the Member States, in order to fully prepare our administrations and the research centres for the new calls of the regional innovation values. And something very important, the Committee of the Regions and the Commission will have to keep very active and very operational and also ambitious for our mutual cooperations with different strategic DGs, as in the joint action plan with your service, Commissioner Ivanova. And I'm extremely pleased to have the Regional Innovation Valley Successful Regions announcement today, as many of them are from our um, Committee of the Regions members. And this is a recognition for our long way that we have covered together, together with uh, your services and many regional and professional associations. Thank you. Thank you so much. The floor goes to Member Bock, Emil Bock, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Please allow me at the beginning uh, to thank you to Commissioner Ivanova and Commissioner Ferreira for their excellent work, not just for regional innovation values, but for entire support for local and regional authorities. But now, talking about the regional innovation values, you pr proved to have both visionary and a pragmatic approach. Why? because at the heart of these values is the spirit of collaboration and partnership. These values are not just geographical areas, but vibrant ecosystems where local and regional authorities, academia, industry, and governments collaborate in order to create a dynamic network that accelerates the innovation process. So in this very moment, I would like to make a reference to the Enrico Letta report. He said about the freedom of movement, but also freedom to stay. 
freedom to stay as a choice, not as a necessity. And also he mentioned in the last report on uh, single market that we need to get an approach to the fifth freedom, fifth freedom dedicated to the free movement of research, innovation, knowledge, and education. And your vision and your support for regional innovation values is exactly touching these two uh, freedoms, freedom to move, but freedom to stay, and also the fifth freedom which he proposed dedicated to the uh, free movement of innovation, knowledge, and uh, education. How can the European Union can support regional innovation values in, in the future? Three ideas. First, tailored support and funding. Second, capacity building and talent development. Third, infrastructure and digital connectivity. The EU cohesion policy must play a crucial role in this regard, but it should not be the sole instrument to support that. I am proud that I am also part of the process. I am looking forward to see the results of the uh, competition, but I can tell you from the very beginning, the, the regional innovation rates are, are already a success, having in mind the vibe which you created around them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Member Besnier, you have the floor for four minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président, Mesdames les Commissaires. En tant que rapporteur de l'avis du Comité des Régions sur le prochain programme cadre, je me félicite que ce débat ait lieu, car nous sommes, comme il a été dit, à un moment charnière avec les préparatifs du prochain programme de l'Union européenne sur la recherche et l'innovation et ceux de la prochaine politique de cohésion. Soutenir l'excellence de la recherche et l'innovation de l'Union européenne en renforçant un espace européen de la recherche, améliorer sa compétitivité dans le monde et accroître son impact en termes de création d'emplois, tout en restant inclusif, est un objectif ambitieux. Cependant, il sera impossible de l'atteindre sans les écosystèmes régionaux d'innovation qui apportent une contribution indispensable à l'innovation dans l'Union, d'où la nécessité d'une approche territorialisée qui reconnaît le rôle clé des villes et des régions, avec le défi majeur de l'élargissement de la participation dans les régions moins performantes et non les pays. Les stratégies de spécialisation intelligente qui sont liées à la politique de cohésion sont un puissant facteur d'excellence pour les écosystèmes régionaux, car elles créent des chaînes de valeur qui nourrissent durablement la croissance économique des villes et des régions. Cependant, elles doivent être retravaillées par chaque région afin d'identifier les réelles spécialisations de chacune. Cela permettra également de faciliter les partenariats interrégions. Il est indispensable d'interfacer plus efficacement la programmation stratégique du prochain programme cadre avec celle des spécialisations intelligentes. Et pour cela, le comité des régions devrait participer de manière effective à la programmation stratégique du programme cadre. La mise en place du programme des investissements interrégionaux en matière d'innovation et les in initiatives du nouvel agenda européen pour l'innovation, telles que la préfiguration des vallées régionales de l'innovation soutenues par l'action Partenariat régionaux pour l'innovation, renforcent la nécessité de soutenir une approche territorialisée de l'innovation et nous nous en félicitons. Cependant, le déploiement de ces nouvelles initiatives reste à mesurer car de nombreuses régions n'ont pu y soumettre leur participation, faute de capacité ou d'assistance technique. Dans ce cadre, le renforcement des programmes de coopération interrégionale pourrait permettre d'améliorer les capacités et une assistance technique nécessaire devra être prévue. Je prends comme exemple ma région, le centre Val-de-Loire, qui n'a pas pu en temps trop court bâtir des partenariats solides et mettre en place les synergies avec le fonds FEDER lors des vallées régionales de l'innovation. Le prochain programme cadre devrait poursuivre une programmation multifonds pour déployer et faire monter en puissance les vallées régionales, tout en préservant le juste équilibre entre soutien à la recherche fondamentale et à la recherche appliquée, notamment en faveur des technologies de rupture. Enfin, pour réussir cet objectif ambitieux, il faudra considérablement améliorer l'articulation des fonds du programme cadre avec les fonds de la future politique de cohésion, afin que l'Europe atteigne l'objectif de 3% de son PIB d'investissement public et privé dans la recherche. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Van Groetysen for two and a half minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed European Commissioners. Hey, I'm sorry, for three minutes. Oh, then I will do it slowly, Mr. President. Um, um, fellow com representatives, it's an honor for me to speak before you today on enhancing EU support for regional research and innovation ecosystems. I stand here as the regional minister for North Brabant in the Netherlands, the rep representative for the Renew Group, and as the rapporteur for this committee on the future of the EU single market and the EU's competitiveness.
Our region of North Brabant thrives by leveraging its unique strengths and fostering a vibrant ecosystem where research, industry and government collaborate well. And this model of innovation has demonstrated the transformative power of regional innovation. The Vanguard Initiative has shown the power of interregional collaboration along industrial value chains and between innovative leading regions, inspiring significant EU policies and instruments. And the new EU innovation agenda emphasizes the development of regional innovation ecosystems. However, the growing complexity of our societal challenges and the intensity of global competition necessity necessitate a more ambitious approach. We need to develop critical masters at the EU level, employ new funding mixes and adopt more synergetic approaches across policy fields. And this requires a focus on excellence rather than uniformity. And looking for towards 2050, the EU must adopt a long-term framework addressing key societal challenges through the next financial program. And this includes strategic autonomy, energy security, labor productivity, resilience, cyber and physical security, decarbonization and agricultural sector reform. And tackling these issues is essential for maintaining our economic competitiveness while building a sustainable and secure future. A strategic EU approach is required, emphasizing key technologies on concrete challenges. To achieve these goals, we must rethink our approach to funding and prioritizing. Increasing the Horizon Europe budget is key, while also focusing on excellence. And this includes prioritizing key areas, reducing administrative burdens and regional authorities, clusters and businesses, and promoting interregional innovation cooperation over traditional operational programs. And as we knew, we believe in stronger connection between industrial and innovation policy is needed to connect knowledge development to industrial needs, especially for SMEs. While place-based innovation is crucial, we must leverage the strengths of leading regions in Europe to achieve significant breakthroughs. The need for a more European approach to industrial policy is also underscored by the latter report already, highlighting the critical role of research and innovation in fostering competitiveness and sustainability. I'm also looking forward to the Draghi report to further discuss how we can increase our global competitiveness. In conclusion, let's embrace an integrated EU industrial and R&D policy, co-developed and co-implemented with member states, but especially with regions, by harnessing the potential of interconnected regional innovation leaders, we can build a more resilient, innovative and competitive Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Member Ilpo Eltimoinen, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. Kiitos. Hyvät kollegat, kun otetaan huomio yhä voimakkaampi globaali taloudellinen kilpailu, olemme tyytyväisiä siihen, että Euroopan komissio on viime aikoina keskitty, keskittynyt Euroopan kilpailukyvyn parantamiseen. Alueiden innovaatiokyky on avainasemassa Euroopan todellisen potentiaalin hyödyntämisessä. Vuosien mittaan paikka perusteella ja alhaalta ylöspäin suuntautuilla aloitteilla on onnistuttu vastaamaan yhteiskunnallisiin, taloudellisiin ja ympäristöön liittyviin haasteisiin. ECR-ryhmä suhtautuu myönteisesti erityisesti alueellisiin innovatiivilaaksoihin ja alueellisiin innovatiivikumppanuuksiin koskeviin aloitteisiin, joissa korostetaan Euroopan alueiden ainutlaatuisia vahvuuksia. Jäsenemme Andrea Hutsu korosti myös paikkaperusteissa innovointia koskevassa tuoreessa lausunnossaan, että on tärkeää tunnustaa alueet innovoinnin vetureeksi ja jatkaa taloudellista tukea ja parantaa Euroopan unionin rahastojen ja innovoinnin tähtävien ohjelmien välistä synergioita. Euroopan unionin pitkän aikavälin taloudellisen menestyksen varmistamiseksi meidän on mielestäni myös alettava keskittyä samanaikaisesti resilienssin merkitykseen. Finanssikriisi, velkakriisi, covid ja Venäjän hyökkäys Ukrainaan. Näin tämänkaltaisilla talouden häiriöillä on ollut erilaisia alueellisia vaikutuksia eri puolilla Euroopan unionia. Käsittelyssä olevassa oma-aloitteisessa lausunnossani Euroopan alueiden häiriösietokyvyn vahvistaminen huomautan, että jotkut jäsenvaltiot ja alueet ovat kärsineet muita voimakkaammin ja että alueellisten talouksien kyky kestää häiriöitä ja toipua niistä on hyvin erilainen. Suhtaudumme myönteisesti innovoidun tukemisen kilpailukyvyn parantamiseksi, mutta samalla kehotamme komissiota tutkimaan aloitteita, joilla tuetaan samanaikaisesti resilienssiä innovoinnin avulla. 
On selvää, että vaikka meidän on tutkittava alueiden suhteellisia vahvuuksia tullaksemme kilpailukykyiseksi, meidän on myös varmistettava alueita tuleviin haasteisiin. Kilpailukykyä ei ole ilman resilienssiä ja resilienssiä ei ole ilman kilpailukykyä. Sen vuoksi kehotan komissiota tutkimaan edelleen mahdollisuuksia, joilla tuetaan erityisesti resilienssiä ja innovointia, mukaan lukien toimitusketjujen monipuolistamiseen liittyviä aloitteita. Tarvitsemme kattavampaa strategioita, jotka parantavat kilpailuetuamme ja vahvistavat samalla kykyämme selviötä talouden häiriöstä. Otetaan tulevaisuudessa tämä yhdistetty Thank lähestymistapa you. ja rakennetaan Eurooppa, joka ei ole pelkästään innovaatiojohtaja, vaan myös resilienssien haasteiden edessä Member MacDonald, you have the floor for two minutes. Dear Commissioners, many thanks for this very interesting and important discussion at this COR plenary. I come from Ireland, the Northern and Western Regional Assembly, where in collaboration with the other two, not two regions in the country, has submitted an expression of interest to establish a regional innovation valley. I, along with members of my group, the European Alliance, believe that the regional innovation valleys is a great initiative to harness the potential of deep tech innovation and address the innovation divide which currently exists both at national and EU level. Recognition of the north west of Ireland as a regional innovation valley will greatly enhance our ability to co coordinate research and innovation investments and policies. It will enable us to address regional challenges more effectively while maintaining a strong alignment with EU priorities. Building on our national and regional smart specialisation strategies, the Northern and Western Regional Assembly is well positioned to work with leading innovators in our region to tackle specific local challenges through the development of DTEC innovation. By collaborating with our universities and key sectors such as agri-food, marine and blue economy, tourism, renewable energy, medtech and advanced manufacturing, we can significantly boast both regional and European competitiveness, but also facilitate the implementation of the new European innovation agenda within our region. Our goal is to address critical issues such as climate action, food security, circular economy, digital transformation and healthcare improvements. I tried to explain in a few words what this would mean to my region, but my main message is simple. To achieve these goals, we urge the EU to continue supporting place-based innovation and to ensure that the Thank cohesion you. and research policy remain robust and adequately funded. This will enable regions like Thank ours you. to thrive and contribute meaningfully to Europe's broader innovation landscape. <coughs> Thank you so much. Member Radinja, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you, President, and thank you so much, Commissioners, for being here with us today for this debate. As Greens, we see the value of local innovation ecosystems. These ecosystems are crucial for ensuring sustainability and resilience. By fostering place-based innovation, we can address local challenges with local solutions, making our region, regions even more adaptive and resilient. The upcoming FP10 is the framework and that will, together with cohesion policy, allow us to build sustainability into our innovation strategies. We call for an even increased budget to enable further investments in green technology and sustainable practices. We also believe that we should simplify the access to funding, promote smart specialization, and encourage peer learning to empower our regions and innovation. The next framework program should be fully aligned with the goals and priorities of the European Green Deal and the Sustainable Development Goals. We see it a huge opportunity to boost job creation, but, and this is a big but, only if we are able to secure and ensure inclusivity and sustainability. We must emphasize gender equality and the inclusion of women and underrepresented groups in the research and innovation field, where the gender gap is even bigger than in the other areas. By aligning our innovation and cohesion policies and putting regions at the heart of our strategy, we can build a Europe that thrives, is just and green. Thank you. Thank you. Member Menendez Alvarez, you have the floor for one minute. 
Thank you, President. Comisaria Ferreira, Comisaria Ivanova, la Comunidad de Madrid está contribuyendo a los ambiciosos objetivos planteados en la Agenda, Nueva Agenda Europea para la Innovación y viene colaborando como socio de la Comisión Europea en el proyecto Partnership for Regional Innovation PRI. Madrid se ha convertido en un lugar de atracción de talento científico, innovador y emprendedor en el que la iniciativa privada es el centro de todo. Prueba de todo ello es el liderazgo internacional que la Comunidad de Madrid ha asumido desarrollando la Estrategia Madrileña de Investigación e Innovación 2030, que incluye la Estrategia de Especialización Inteligente. Además, en un firme compromiso con el desarrollo tecnológico verde, Madrid acaba de crear un hub de innovación tecnológica para el desarrollo de combustibles de aviación menos contaminantes y en 2023 se consolidó como un hub digital esencial en el sur de Europa. Desde nuestra experiencia, queremos seguir aportando ideas constructivas para la consolidación de la autonomía estrategia de la Unión Europea, confiando en poder seguir cooperando con la Comisión Europea en programas tan importantes como el de Regional Innovation. Muchas Party. gracias. Gracias. Member Ortil, one minute. Dziękuję bardzo, panie przewodniczący. Szanowny panie komisarz, bardzo dziękuję za tą obecność i za tą dyskusję w tej ważnej debacie. Wiemy wszyscy, jak ważny jest przemysł naszej Unii Europejskiej, jak ważne są nowe techniki, technologie, jak ważna jest niezależność przemysłu. Ja chcę dać przykład naszego regionalnego programu z Podkarpacia, który ma ponad 10%, 250 milionów euro przeznaczone właśnie na innowacje, na przedsiębiorczość. I w tym znajduje się taki kluczowy nasz projekt, czyli Podkarpackie Centrum Innowacji, które powstało w ramach takiego doradztwa i projektu Catching Up, który Komisja Europejska wraz z Bankiem Światowym światowym jako formę doradztwa świadczyły w naszym województwie. Projekt się świetnie sprawdza i przez pryzmat naszych inteligentnych specjalizacji rozwijamy oczywiście nasze innowacje. Cieszymy się bardzo, że jesteśmy na tej mapie, którą tu pani komisarz prezentowała. Ja myślę, że jesteśmy też dobrą praktyką w tym względzie dla Ukrainy. Cieszę się bardzo, że możemy właśnie w bardzo szybki sposób wydawać środki na innowacje, bo to jest pierwszy projekt, który uruchamiamy w tym względzie. Thank you so much. Member Perez Garcia, one minute. Thank you. First of all, uh, we are Navarra, uh, leading uh, the European Circular Innovation Valley, one of those valleys that have been selected, so we are very happy with that. But I would like to congratulate also my colleagues from uh, Frisia, Groninger, Drenthe, the region of uh, North Central Sweden, um, Normandy, Valoni, Helsinki, Usima, and Lithuania, Scotland, and Bulgaria, which are part of this regional innovation valley on the circular economy. With the recognition of the circular economy, Innovation Valley is a recognition of the Navarra Circular Initiative, who has, which has been recently awarded by the European Association of the Regional Development Agencies. With this, uh, with this consortium, we want to connect nine regional innovation ecosystems in line with the smart specialization strategies and sustainable, also to create EU industrial value chains in line with the European Green Deal in the industrial plan, also to increase the knowledge awareness of the education on circular economy, and last but not least, to reinforce and enhance the regional strategy in line with the cohesion policy, which we have to be reminded next commission has to be reminded the cohesion policy. Thank you. Thank you. Member von der Kling Weilbier. Member Urucia de los Mozos. One minute. Cantabria considera positivo que las políticas europeas de innovación adopten un enfoque orientado al territorio, relacionando la financiación de los fondos estructurales con el potencial de innovación de las regiones europeas. La nueva Agencia Europea de Innovación, que busca la cooperación entre los ecosistemas europeos con nuevos instrumentos como los valles regionales de innovación, es un paso prometedor, pero no suficiente. Cantabria necesita una agenda digital a semejanza de otras regiones europeas, que facilite el cambio de modelo productivo, Pensándose en la innovación y la transformación digital, para lo que hemos creado un foro de innovación donde participan más de 50 entidades. Y para su desarrollo es necesario el trabajo conjunto entre las regiones europeas, el gobierno regional, las instituciones de investigación y las empresas privadas para atraer fondos nacionales y europeos para el desarrollo de proyectos y más de más. Y esta colaboración que necesitará de financiación también servirá para que empresas locales especializadas en el mundo TIC puedan participar en proyectos tecnológicos de gran envergadura y complejidad liderados por empresas de carácter multinacional. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Stefan Radev, one minute. Gracias, señor presidente. Gracias, mi colega. 
Всички сме наясно с предизвикателствата като изменение на климата, застаряването на населението или устойчивото развитие. Общините следва да играят активна роля на посредници и да спомагат за широкото включване на всички заинтересовани страни в оформянето на устойчиви, отворени и справедливи общности и политики. Инновации и технологиите не водят до загуба на работни места. Те създават такива, а повече за ето се означава и повече приходи, които да се инвестират в по-балансирането социално и економическо развитие. Ключово, разбира се, е правилното разпределение на тези приходи, така че местното ниво да има стимули да развива иновациите по места. Нужно е да мислим в динамични мрежи и да работим за повече сближаване в комбинация с увеличен капацитет и финансиране за местните иноватори. Благодаря. Bardzo dziękuję Pani Przewodniczący. Chciałem przede wszystkim podziękować Panią Komisarz za dostrzeżenie naszych wysiłków na rzecz uzależnienia od paliw kopalnych. Rzeczywiście ono zmniejsza się radykalnie. W przyszłym roku jako pierwszy w Polsce region zaprzestaniemy wydobycia węgla brunatnego i spalania go w elektrowniach. Rozwijamy technologie wodorowe. Stworzyliśmy jako pierwsi w Polsce strategię wodorową i konsekwentnie realizujemy ją w postaci wielu inicjatyw, chociażby platformy wodorowej, która skupia wielu aktywnych uczestników tego procesu, Wielkopolskiej Doliny Wodorowej, która skupia wyższe uczelnie, podmioty biznesowe, stowarzyszenia, samorządy. Razem chcemy tworzyć wodorową przyszłość. Uważamy, że wodór, zielony wodór jest ogromną szansą aby tworzyć i źródło napędu dla pojazdów i też tworzyć magazyny energii, które będzie można wykorzystać na momencie, kiedy zielona energia będzie w deficycie w sieci. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you. Member Martinez Minges. You have the floor for one minute. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Un minuto para sumarme al llamado de las comisarias Ferreira y Ivanova para reforzar a futuro las políticas de investigación, innovación y fundamentalmente la política de cohesión, que han sido la herramienta fundamental para corregir las desigualdades entre los países de la Unión. Es imprescindible que reconozcamos y abordemos el refuerzo financiero y económico para el nuevo periodo y al mismo tiempo seamos conscientes de las desigualdades que existen dentro de cada uno de los países de la Unión. Modifiquemos tanto tanto la base territorial sobre las que aplicamos los fondos. El ámbito NUT2 enmascara graves desequilibrios territoriales que han de evaluarse a nivel NUT3 e incluso NUT4. Y de igual forma debemos corregir los indicadores que desde el punto de vista meramente económico, renta per cápita o Producto Interior Bruto, se convierten en verdaderas trampas al desarrollo para los entornos rurales o con graves problemas demográficos. No podemos confundir cohesión o desarrollo territorial con convergencia económica. No se trata solo de proteger y hacer universal nuestro estado del bienestar, sino de dotar de competitividad económica y social a los territorios y proteger el estado de derecho, las instituciones europeas y la propia democracia. Muchas gracias. Now that concludes the, interven now that concludes the interventions from uh, the floor. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Ivanova for five minutes to final remarks. Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, to all of you, honorable members, for sharing your thoughts and your valuable perspectives from the standpoint of the regions. This is very, very valuable for us. Many of you were uh, wondering and referring to the next framework program, how it would look like. I think now is not the moment. It's a bit too early to say how exactly it would look like, but we are also at a very special and important moment of evaluating our current programs. Just just issued the ex post evaluation Horizon 2020. We are working on the uh, midterm review of Horizon Europe. And uh, these will be very important conclusions that will draw lessons of what worked well and not so well and how we can improve for the future. And already some conclusions can be made, and you mentioned some of them, how we could further simplify, how we could improve the synergies. I agree with you, uh, those of you who mentioned that we should keep the balance between the fundamental and the applied research. 
I'm very thankful to those of you who uh, made this strong call for an adequate budget for research and innovation. Thank you very much. This is very important. We had uh, a very uh, many occasions with the Belgian presidency to underline the importance of, of uh, investment in research and innovation. And please take that message back to your countries and tell it to your finance ministers, because it's important when the discussions about the next MFF start that this message is repeated constantly. So thank you for that. Uh, now, if you allow me just a few words on uh, underlining again what the importance of uh, the regional innovation valley is about. First, uh, we will uh, support them uh, by facilitating the exchange of best practices and cooperation between them, including sharing information on relevant additional funding opportunities. We will, of course, do this through our European Innovation Council Forum and also through the S3 Community of Practice under the leadership of, of uh, Commissioner Ferreira. Second, these regional innovation valleys will no doubt benefit from increased visibility, including dedicated communication actions, including community building, also events. And we want to help the regions showcase their success and thereby attract additional investments. Third, we will also organize targeted matchmaking events for regional innovation valleys to help them engage into interregional activities, and these also will certainly further strengthen the connections across the regions. Last but not least, the regional innovation valleys in less developed regions may benefit from the support facility for interregional innovation investments. They may, for example, participate in training sessions, workshops, or receive advice for project applications. Overall, the first parallel calls under Horizon Europe and the European Regional Development Fund, we expect to grant a total of over 115 million euros of EU funding, and we expect that these will leverage at least another 77 million euros from private and public sources. And I'm happy to say that we are already preparing new calls for 2025 under Horizon Europe to support additional regional innovation valleys for another 40 million euros. And of course, we will continue to further improve the synergies between Horizon Europe and the Cohesion Policy Funds. We have achieved good progress, but more uh, still can be done. However, I would like to emphasize that we cannot deliver on our own. We need to continue to work together, because only together we can address the global uh, challenges that we are uh, facing. And last, uh, one last word, uh, I'm particularly very grateful and want to ex express my, my sincere appreciation for the excellent cooperation that uh, we've had with you, and I hope that this cooperation will also continue with the next mandate of the next Commission. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Commissioner Elisa Ferreira for five minutes. Thank you very much, President. And um, I think a lot has already been said. I would just uh, um, touch upon two or three topics. One of them is that this is recognition of an evidence, that is that uh, sectoral policies or policies in general, they all have asymmetric impacts on the territories. So you cannot expect to have this uh, sectoral policy that touches in the same way different realities on the ground. <clears throat> so recognizing that territories matter is essential from a sectoral perspective, as it is essential to recognize that when we want to develop a region, we have got to do a lot with cohesion policy, but also to make sure that also member states take into account and Europe takes into account in the sectoral policies these asymmetric impacts that occur. Otherwise, sometimes we are trying to do one thing with one hand and another thing the opposite with the other one. So this is the first aspect that I value very much in this exercise, that in fact we recognize that in, that in a sector as strategic as research and development, there is a place for, uh, for fundamental research, there is a, f a, a place for innovation and applied research, and that different territories can play and should play different tasks in this process that benefits the whole of Europe. 
Uh, then uh, I, I would like also to underline that uh, if the policy is not there, this public policy, and we have shown it in the ninth cohesion report, I think we'll naturally, things will tend to concentrate in the usual beneficiaries, in the usual more developed centers. But this can create and will create a lot of fragmentation across Europe, also in the prospects for growth, also in the prospects for creating good jobs and good opportunities for young qualified people to have a life exactly in the place where they prefer to live. And so uh, I couldn't value more the importance of this aspect as well. The other point I'd like to underline is that, in fact, we are not only joining efforts across the sectors and the territories, but also suggesting collaboration in each region between the different entities and institutions and across regions so that, in fact, we uh, learn with each other and that we gain a certain dimension in uh, such a competitive market as it is innovation in a global world and, uh, and fundamental research in a global world. So this is the other aspect I would like to underline, so cooperation and coherence in the different instruments that we have in our hands when we are looking at a region. And coming to the regional level, or to a NUTS 2, NUTS 3, even NUTS 4, as some of you re referred to, it is absolutely essential that uh, we also look at the quality of the institutions and proposals, because we need a place-based approach, as all of you mentioned, but this place-based requires quality in the proposals and quality in the implementation, and coherence across the different dimensions of the development agenda. Having said this, it was, I want to, to finish by thanking all of you for exchanging your experience, for telling us how you see and how you feel this initiative. Of course, we have margins for improvement in the future, but this is a work that uh, progresses as we step on it. It's one of those roads that we have got to uh, build by walking on it. And I think exchanging experiences is very important. Allow me to uh, underline the, that we expect you'll participate in the Smart Specialization Conference in Rimini in December. And uh, one of the main topics of the conference will be Smart Specialization and its role in connecting regional innovation valleys. So on top of everything that my good friend uh, already mentioned, I think I'd like to, uh, to, to, to share with you this moment when we materialize this exchange of views that is Europe. Uh, Europe is this. So thank you very, very much to all of you and to all the quality of the debates that we had. Thank you. Well, dear commissioners, we are the ones who thank you for taking the time to be with us uh, in this debate and contribute with your insights, your experience, your knowledge to this issue that is truly relevant for regions across Europe. Thank you so much, and I wish you the rest of a good day. Thank you. Thank you.